For me, teaching history emphasizes that this history is U.S. history. It is global history. There's no differentiation between them. However, I found the traditional way of teaching history excludes these voices. So talking about history as a field and the facts, but also history as the production of narratives and myths and erasures. My name is Hillary Green. I'm an Associate Professor of History in the Department of Gender and Race Studies. My interest really came out of childhood and the absences that were in the world around me, whether they were textbooks or museums. And my parents who both purposely took my brothers and I around the Boston area, I started knowing that there was no black women oftentimes in public spaces. And I started asking questions, well, where are the people that I know, like my mother? Educated, working class, making the community difference, but not in the textbooks, not on the ground. And just having parents who allowed me to be curious and intellectually spark my curiosity by reading and getting any type of historical material there. The Hallow Grounds project began with two things. First, a historical marker by the guardhouse that said on it, rented slaves. On my on-campus visit convinced me to come to UA because it showed me that UA had changed in its historical past and no more the campus of George Wallace. The second and more urgent impetus was a student though. My second semester at the university, I had a black male student say slavery did not exist at UA and was questioning the course material. And then I took the campus tour and I could not fault the student anymore. Building on my education at the University of North Carolina and Tufts University, where I knew alternate campus tours was a possibility to disrupt narratives by walking the campus, I went into Hull and UA Digital Collections and built a tour that could be done during a class period. As I always tell my students, whenever you do something, sometimes it only takes once and then I change the syllabus. By changing the syllabus because of that one student, I have now reached over 5,000 people in person. I have published several articles on it. I have given talks in both the U.S. and in the U.K. on this history. And it will be the subject of my third book project once I get done with book number two. When I first arrived at UA, Judy Bonner was the leader of the campus, and to have a woman in that position of leadership was something that was striking because sadly, there's not enough women leading um, institutions of higher ed. So seeing this change in how UA as an institution has been grappling with that history, Judy Bonner's leadership in that and her ties when I arrived here is really nice to be honored and continuing her legacy that she ended with and that's the deal with the history of UA. The legacy that I would love to leave for the University of Alabama is one of being willing to ask the hard-hitting questions, not looking for simple answers, but the deeper, complex answers that leads to reconciling UA's complex racial past while healing in the process, and to no longer hide this history, but to embrace it and move forward.